today we're going to be taking this really inexpensive computer chip and basically be able to hack Wi-Fi. But this was a really challenging thing because we actually got it to fit into this lighter. So it's super inconspicuous. There's a switch and the battery built all inside. So I think it's really cool, but this was not an easy feat. So I'm here with the hacktivist Fu, and I'm here with MakerJ101. He's a YouTuber, he makes really awesome stuff. And today we're gonna to be showing you how to do this for yourself, for educational purposes only, because it's illegal. Hey, so as Greek Gadget Guru said, uh, my name's Fu, and I'm kind of a hacktivist, I'm an activist. Uh, I know how to do things online. I've been doing it for a while. So what I'm helping them with today is taking this ESP, uh, 8266 chip and putting a thing by Space Hunt on it that allows us to do some penetration testing. What that means is test our own network security and kind of see, um, you know, how someone else would affect us if they were a legitimate hacker. So this is fairly inexpensive. It's about uh, 7 or $9 on Amazon. You can get them kind of cheaper. And what I'm going to do is prep it for uh, MakerJ and Greek Gadget by putting the software that we found on GitHub and some other projects on. Uh, now, you probably may have said some other YouTubers have done this, but this is the latest version out of in 2017, so it's a lot more user-friendly. You don't have to know Arduino coding, but if you want to modify it and change it yourself, I definitely recommend it. So the entire point is we have these lighters, and because of Kingsman, we thought, like, wouldn't it be fun if we could fit this in here? So that is going to be the project today. So one of the things is, this is pretty much done. It comes with uh, a lot of pins, things you can put on other Arduino units, but we kind of uh, desoldered those. Now once again, this is illegal because you don't want to block emergency services, and you use this for penetration testing of your home networks. Uh, there is a, a patch for firmware and OpenWRT, other things to kind of prevent people from using this on you. But for now, what I'm gonna do is show you how to put uh, Space Hun's GitHub his repository on this. So right now the first thing I'm going to say is make sure you have a great USB cord. If you don't, uh, we have an Amazon link to some that actually work. Uh, we've tried this two, three times with USB cords that would power it, but we wouldn't actually see it. Uh, the other thing is, depending upon what you're using, uh, Mac, Linux, Windows, download the appropriate drivers. For what we're doing today, we're going to actually be using Windows 10. So I'm sorry, all my Linux geeks, but that's just kind of what uh, most of the people on the channel are using. So I have the Node MCU we got off Amazon, um, little $10 piece. We're going to plug it in. Um, you're going to see this on the computer shortly. There's a little beep. It recognizes it. Everything's going okay. And we're going to open up the uh, ESP flasher. So it's showing up on comms port 4 for us. Uh, that could be another COM port for you, and you just look at it. So one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to go, and you're going to actually select which one it is. Uh, I've gone ahead and I've put it on the desktop, which is the dauthor 1 megabit bin. If you're using another one, um, you need to check into that, but this should be what you're using if you've ordered it. So the first thing is, uh, once we've loaded the firmware programmer and we've loaded the bin, which is the firmware itself, all we do is press flash. It's going to find the AP. We're going to block that out. We're going to block out the STA so, you know, we can't be identified. Um, and as you can see, it's going through this simplistic process where it uploads. This takes, uh, if we speed up the video, only about a mm, minute or two. Less than that. So to explain a little bit about how this works, this unit works in about three ways. One is it will spam SSID. So if you're looking at it, you're gonna see tons of Wi-Fi's that you can either name yourself or it will randomly generate. It will do something called deauthentication. So it will put a lot of packets in that interfere between you and the router, making you not be able to keep your authentication and keep connected. Um, there's a third thing it can do, but for the purposes and the funnest one, it's actually creating all of those spam Wi-Fi accounts. So if you ever wanted to put FBI van, pretty f 
pretty fly for a Wi-Fi or anything else, you can do it all at once. So there's probably a top 10 list of top Wi-Fi names you could do. I think that's how we're going to use it because we don't want to really de-authenticate anything other than testing purposes and we'll go from there. So it's actually finishing up, it's flashing. We get this little green thumbs up from the Node MCU team. It says ready. And what we're gonna do is we're going to look at the log real fast. Everything says it's passed, program flash success. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure you can do any of this. We're gonna close it down and then we're going to unplug it. Now we're gonna plug it back in. So after flashing the deauthor, what you do is you go and you choose your right advice. So we have a few here. We have the Osmo, which is recording me. We have a few other things within the Hack Pittsburgh shop. But for us, we're going to go to Pwned. We've already entered the code, which is deauthor, D-E-A-U-T-H-E-R, and we're going to connect. And once we're connected, it's going to display the software is meant for testing and vulnerability purposes, which is what you should be using it for. Um, and we're only using it in our own networks and devices. So we're going to say, yes, we've read, we understand, and we're going to scan. So this is going to show us all the Wi-Fi's around. And for our purposes, we're going to use Hack Pittsburgh. You select that, you go over to attacks, and then you can kind of see you have the three attacks. You have deauth, beacon, and probe request. For our purposes today, we're going to focus on deauth, and we're going to focus on beacon request. So we've selected the AP, which is Hack Pittsburgh. We have the station and we're going to clone it. And when you press clone, you'll go down and you'll see that it actually has 48 SSIDs, which are 48 Wi-Fi networks that have the same name. So if someone's looking to connect at that concert, at that like high school or anything, you're not going to see it or you are damn sure better be good at picking out the right one. So it becomes a lottery. It's very annoying. All right, so this is what looks like just a regular lighter, but there's actually the chip and the battery built right in. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. And you'll see here the little icon shows up, start rotating, and that means it's finding a new network. Boom, pond. Password is deauthor. And we'll join it. It's confirmed. So you would just discreetly take off the cap, put it back together. So now that's working. These are all our failed attempts. We try to fit it in this cool lighter. Reminds me a lot of the Kingsman, but just not enough room in there. So found this one. We left links to Amazon for this. So we'll go into Pond. Now we have to go to our Wi-Fi network. And go to AP stations. Let's go ahead and scan. So it's scanning for an access point. It says Hack Pittsburgh, Hack Pittsburgh Public, all these different Wi-Fi. So even if you want to know how strong your Wi-Fi network is, you can use that for this too. Or maybe which ones are around because this has a pretty good range. All right, so this is our own network, Hack Pittsburgh. So we're going to go ahead and select that. No one's around. It's pretty late. As you can see, it's 2.43 a.m. So I don't think anyone needs the Wi-Fi network now right now so no harm done and we're going to go to attack and we're going to go ahead and start the deauthentication so what this is going to do is send out a bunch of little packets that's just data it's going to interfere with the wi-fi network we're going to do something fun this is the clone feature so we have hack pittsburgh we're going to clone that okay and you can see here at the bottom there's a whole bunch of hack pittsburgh you have no idea which one is the real Hack Pittsburgh. Everything else is just a clone. It doesn't do anything. This is just kind of a joke. It's a little bit annoying. This little chip here that we're using pulls about 90 milliamps, and this is a 600 milliamp hour little battery that we have in here that's from a drone. I have links to Amazon if you want to try and do this yourself just for fun, just maybe prank your friends on your own Wi-Fi network or something like that. You can't take this out in public. It's totally illegal. One of the things that you can do after cloning is you can come through here and you can hit random. And what it does is it will generate and continue generating all these random networks. 
So it's really hard and really frustrating to pick the right one. And it will cycle through about 48 at a time, right? So we're just gonna go clear here. I could not have done this without Maker J101. So thank you, shout out to him. Go check out his channel. So you're able to use these clippers to go in between all these little pieces. You can see the little ridges there. Nice and easy to follow because you just kind of go down the line like so. Real simple. And you take some of these needle nose pliers and you can just slide those off. You might even be able to get this whole thing off in one giant piece if you pry it on both sides. So after you remove all of those little black pieces, you're left with a centipede. And to desolder all the legs, you just need to take your soldering iron and heat up each one and then just kind of like push it down. This little stash lighter right here fits the battery oh so perfectly. Wow, like can you get any better than that? But it doesn't fit in the hole, it's too big. And it's literally about the same width as the board minus the pins. Basically these are all for computer programming if you wanted to have some output pins because this is basically like an Arduino, it's programmable microcontroller. We don't care about anything else. We just want this thing to output a signal, which is being done by this little antenna here and this module, which is basically the computer that's doing all the work. So we're gonna use this sanding tool to hopefully sand everything but my fingers, and that will hopefully allow it to fit into that lighter. Pretty much any, as long as you're not getting close to this thing, and you can see that it fits pretty nice. I don't think that the Wi-Fi will have any problem going through plastic. And then this is the charger. And they all come with this little, these little tabs here that make it really easy for you to not reverse the polarity on the voltage and blow up the batteries. But I, in order to use this little adapter right here, which I think comes in the kits themselves, I needed to cut off those tabs, so just keep in mind you want to keep the polarity red to red, blue or black to black, and then this will work really nice. Okay, so to basically wire this thing up, we're going to just have the switch which is going to break the actual connection to the battery. So the power is going to come from the battery to the switch on one side, and you can see right here. Whenever I switch this up, the little LED right there will go off, just for a second. And unfortunately, that's all it gives you for noticing if it's actually on. Just that one tiny second is actually a voltage regulator. So you're going to want to put one of the wires there, and the other one on... That's basically going to be for the, uh, the power going in. And then there is a little portion right here. You can't see it because I put some hot glue just to cover up the leads because these connection points were kind of weak with how small they are. So basically, you want to put one wire going from here to the end there. That's what this looks like. And that's the white wire. And that's basically, there's a uh, like activation pin right here. And then the other one is just going to go to the lead the very last one over here, which is going to be your negative. So negative going to your battery, and then the positive is going to go from, you're going to have your battery going to the switch, and another wire that goes all the way back. It doesn't matter which side you put this on because it's just basically a bridge. You're just connecting the two together and you have it on. This is really simple, but the circuitry and the soldering may be a little bit challenging, but nothing you can't do even if you're trying this for the first time. So it looks like he'd put one there, so to pin three, and then connecting this one and this one, just with that white wire. They're just connected. That's basically allowing it, the voltage is actually going here, but this needs to be connected to the voltage as well, the third pin, because that's gonna tell this thing to turn on. That's just how they have this thing set up. All right, so let's go ahead and insert this thing in our little stash lighter. I added this carbon fiber vinyl just to make it look a little fancier. I always think it adds a nice touch. And then we want to put the chip up top. I'm sorry, the, the casing of the wire actually got filleted 
off of this. So it is super tight. So you just want to kind of push that in and you should be good. I'm going to turn off the lights here and we're going to see if we can at least see a faint flash from turning this thing on. Yep. So you can see it's on. All right, so overall, I'm really happy with the end result. I think that the carbon fiber makes it look a little bit more professional. Plus, it's made out of plastic, so it's easier for the signal to be generated and sent out. There's no obstructions. Originally, I wanted to just put it into a Zippo lighter case, but I thought that was a little bit too simple. And then I went way overboard, and I tried to actually mill out the metal portion of this lighter and cram everything inside. There's a little button here on the side, and when you press it, you can see there's a jet flame. Might be a little bit difficult to see, but I think this is a really awesome lighter, and to have all the functionality at once would be just ridiculous. But we do have, I think, the best of both worlds. You have the actual functionality of the lighter, which otherwise we wouldn't have, and it's also going to be able to generate that because we have the plastic casing and we can also fit a way bigger battery than in both of these so I think that this is probably the best option. So what other types of gadgets do you think that I should try and fit into a lighter? I'd love for you to post a comment below. Alright so I know that this isn't technically a jammer, it's a de-authenticator but it's simulating a jammer and the law doesn't give a shit. Literally if you were to do something and someone were to get hurt because they couldn't connect to a network or whatever you're still gonna get slammed so it's a jammer to the eyes of the law, which I don't really see what else matters at that point. So from a technical aspect, yeah, you're right, it's a de-authenticator, but it's still disrupting Wi-Fi. So, I mean, pick your poison. Anyway, I really liked building these types of gadgets where it's sort of like a hacker style thing. And I'm thinking about doing some more projects like this. I'd love for you to leave a comment below. Maybe what else could I build into a lighter? I love doing these little small projects because it gives me enough time to work on some larger ones in the meantime. So thank you so much for watching. And go ahead and check out some of my other lighter videos. I think that you'll really enjoy them. I'll leave a playlist for you to click and some of my other favorite videos that I think you'd also enjoy.